What's going on, Dolphin fans? It's mailbag time. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports, ready and eager to answer all y'all's questions. So I know I always tell y'all to subscribe, do this, do that. But I asked you on our YouTube community channel to go ahead and submit your questions. And all the questions that were submitted, you're going to see here on today's show. The first one's coming in from Jason Gray. What improvements can the Dolphins make to have an even better defense? Some of the notes that I wrote down is you got to be able to upgrade at the nose tackle position. Raekwon Davis, personally, I think he's coming off one of his worst seasons. And then... Anytime you can go out and get more edge rush help, it's obviously never a bad thing. Whether that's somebody like Avon Miller, Chandler Jones, definitely something to consider. And going out and finding another solid nickel corner because you know you got Byron Jones, you know you have Xavier Howard, that's a way to upgrade on the defensive side. Let's go to my guy, Giancarlo3300, who I actually I believe used to be Mike Carlo3300. After all the additions to the offensive staff and their skill sets, what do you predict Jalen Waddle's stats will be next year? I love Jalen Waddle. I think he's one of the most dynamic wide receivers in the National Football League. The numbers that I got here are 85 catches, 1,120 yards, and seven touchdowns. I upped the yards per catch because I believe this offense is going to be a lot more explosive, or at least that's what you're hoping. It can be a little bit more explosive because the offensive line can block longer, receivers can get down the field, the running game opens it up a little bit more. So yes, less receivers. Exceptions, more yards, more touchdowns because you have more opportunities in the red zone. But now here's y'all's opportunity. How many receiving yards for Jalen Waddell in his second year in the National Football League? Let me know down in the comments section how many yards for Waddell. All right, this next one's coming up from Mauricio Batista. With the additions of Frank Smith at OC, Dara Bevel at quarterback coach, keeping Boyer at D.C., what grade would you give the coaching staff McDaniel is putting together? Well, from those three guys right there, I would probably give it a C minus or C plus, B minus. I'm actually not that crazy about Frank Smith as an OC. I mean, he's just going to be somebody that listens to exactly what Mike McDaniel's doing. Boyer, I still like him as a defensive-minded dude. And then in terms of Bevel at quarterback coach, He's literally failed almost every single place that he's been at. Now, sure, he hasn't been on very good teams, but I'm going to be a lot more confident in McDaniel than a lot of the people that he's brought in so far. Let's go to an expensive mango. And all of our receivers are on expiring deals, leaving free agency. Who do you see the Dolphins bringing in to fill that void? I mean, luckily, when you're the Dolphins, you have the most money in terms of salary cap space. So you can go out and get some big-name guys, maybe like an Allen Robinson, maybe Chris Godwin. I don't see Devontae Adams being available. I think they end up franchise tagging him. Christian Kirk, DJ Chark is a name, Michael Gallup, definitely some receivers to keep in mind. Now, if the Dolphins go out and sign any of those big-time guys, if they go out and make a move, we got you covered here. And we're getting super freaking close to hitting 21,000 subscribers. So I think we're like 143 away. If you love the Dolphins, if you appreciate what we do here because we keep you up to date and free videos, go ahead and hit that sub button. All right, what up, Chris? Do you think that there's any big-name defensive players that need to be added from free agency, or are we good and only need to worry about the offense? I mean, there's no doubt about it. The offense is the, the bigger eyesore, running back, wide receiver, offensive line. But some of the names that I wrote down that are elite players that the Dolphins, if they wanted to, they absolutely could afford. Vaughn Miller, Chandler Jones, Hassan Reddick, Harold Landry, solid linebacker and Devondre Campbell coming off one of his best seasons. And then if you want to upgrade at the defensive tackle position, I'm also going to throw out a name who a little bit cheaper, not a big name guy, but I love B.J. Hill. Now, I want you guys to name a big name defensive free agent that you believe Miami could go out there and get. Even though they have a lot of money, I still want them to go out and invest a lot of that money into the offensive line. You can invest it on the offensive side. And if the Dolphins want to still build some of those other weaknesses in the draft, I believe with Boyer, with McDaniel, they'd be able to go ahead and do so. This next question is coming in here on Dolphins Mailbag is from Carter. Should the Dolphins trade for like Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, or maybe like a Juju or Mike Evans? Well, one of these is unlike the other. Juju is a free agent, so you don't have to go out and trade for him. Mike Evans, sorry, do not see that one happening. Aaron Rodgers, I don't see him going to Miami, and I also don't see Devontae Adams. So hypothetically speaking, the most realistic one is Juju Smith-Schuster. However, he's a receiver that I would not pay over 11 or $12 million, and I believe that's what he's going to get on the open market. Now, 
But guys, we got some brand new, and yes, I'm saying brand new Dolphins t-shirts. And if you love this t-shirt right here, it comes in sizes extra small all the way up to 5XL. You can get it for only $24.99 at the link that you see below. That link is going to be available in the description and in the comment section. At the end of the day, I want to get you guys some awesome gear. Dolphins t-shirt at chatsports.com slash Dolphins T. Let's go to Daily Dimer. Do you think if Kyler Murray requests a trade, will Miami be involved? No. And one, Kyler's not going to get traded. I know Kyler deleted all of his social media stuff. But for those of you that don't know Kyler, not that I know him personally, but people who I know personally know Kyler personally, and he's a big-time drama queen. Who? And when you see a guy like Chris Mortensen calling him a drama queen, I'm going to believe that he's a drama queen. However, he's not going to end up going to the Miami Dolphins. Let's go to Semph. What's going on with Deshaun Watson? Do you think the Dolphins can make a move if he's innocent? So for those of you that do not know or maybe don't watch some of our content at Chat Sports, I actually talked about this on our live show on Wednesday, and I broke it all down. Deshaun Watson, he's got a case essentially on February 22nd, and if he doesn't come to a settlement with all 22 women that have allegations against him, then actually on May 8th, or not May 8th, uh, later on in May, he would then have to go to another civil court. So at the end of the day, I don't see all 22 allegations being solved, which means we'll have to continue to deal with this in May. So at this current juncture, I don't have a good answer for you. Though, if Deshaun's innocent, yes, I absolutely would have interest in him. So I know a lot of times, like we've already had a Kyler Murray, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson question here on today's show. And that's because there's a lot of Dolphins fans, and me included, when I say I wouldn't be confident in Tua Tonga Vailoa either. And if you could ask me, would I want Tua as the Dolphins quarterback? No, I would type my end for no, because there's other options out there. However, I also get that you guys are loyal. I get that it's going to be his year three. You're hoping that he can make that jump and maybe behind a better offensive line, maybe behind a better running game. You can go ahead and type your Y for yes. But this is the part of the show that I want you guys to interact with me. Y for yes and for no. Do you want the Dolphins or, wow, do you want Tua to be with the Dolphins? Let's go to Steven or Stefan Peterson. Could a Jordan Love, another quarterback, could a Jordan Love trade in general happen, Dolphins or any team? I'm going to go ahead and say no for the simple fact of the Green Bay Packers, not only did they draft Jordan Love in the first round, they traded up for Jordan Love at 26 overall. And if you're an organization and you do that and you never give him a shot, it's, a, it's going to be a real black eye for you. So personally, no, because he hasn't looked good. He was our third-string quarterback last year. No team's going to want to go out and trade for him. And if Green Bay does end up not having Rodgers, Jordan Love's going to be their starting quarterback. Nye Galaxy, should the Dolphins draft a running back with a top 100 pick? I'm going to say no, and the only reason why I say no is because the Dolphins have three, their first three picks are 29, 50, and 101. I do not have any running back in my top 50 overall prospects. Now, if they want to go ahead and get somebody like I don't know, Green from Michigan State or Isaiah Spiller. Those are my top two running backs, and I have both of those guys around like the 60 mark. Now, you can go ahead and reach for one of those dudes at 50, but when I do it, no. What up, Miami, Dakota? Two late-round prospects that would help the Dolphins big time. So I took a deep dive. I did some study, and I wanted to be able to figure out some names for you. So two running backs that I like. I like Damian Pierce and James Cook. James Cook is Dalvin Cook's brother. From the wide receiver spot, Trey Turner, the wide receiver from Virginia Tech. Alec Pierce, the kid from Cincinnati. And then an offensive tackle who, I'm going to be honest, has got some issues, off-the-field issues, is Dare Rosenthal. He's a really good player from Kentucky. But he's got some off-the-field issues. If you want to roll the dice on him, hey, go ahead and do it. I mean, after all, you took a shot on what's-his-name from Georgia who was a bust with the Giants and every other place he's been. Let's go to Steel Merrick. Miami Dolphins, 91. I will always be a Dolphins fan. So essentially what you're saying is you've been a Dolphins fan since 1991. That's even longer than I've been alive. Now, how about this, y'all? Let me know down in the comments section how long you've been a Dolphins fan. If it's been since birth, Hey, let me know when you've been born. I guess that's kind of a weird thing to say. If it's over the last 10 years, say, hey, man, since 2005. Whenever it's been, how long have you been a Dolphins fan? Just curious to see what you guys have to say. Let's go to Big D. wonder how you got that name. Everything looking good. Our quarterback will look good. Our running game, too. The O-line will come together or get replaced. 
I mean, this is just optimism at its finest here. I mean, you have to be able to think about this. Quarterback will look good. Maybe you're hoping he can be a top 15 guy. You're hoping the running game can come together with Mike McDaniel and the offensive line. It can't get any worse. Let's go to Karen. What up, ma'am? Who do you think the Dolphins can sign in free agency or any big names? If I was Miami, I would concentrate on the offensive tackle position. Maybe somebody like a Teron Armstead at left tackle. If you wanted somebody like guard, Brandon Scherf's my top dude. Andrew Norwell's a name to consider at the left guard position. And then right tackle, the top guy's Morgan Moses. Obviously, there's some receivers out there that I mentioned before, but you want to try to bring back somebody like Mike Kosicki, build the offensive line, and if you're looking for a running back, the most bang-for-your-buck dude out there, in my personal opinion, is Chase Edmonds.